South Australia's Primary Industries Minister is Claire Scriven. She joins us today. And Claire, there's a lot to talk about. Uh, first of all, some exciting innovations in agriculture uh, that have been supported by government grants in the past and people could get a piece of that action again. That's right. So the uh, next round of the AgTech Growth Fund is open. Uh, and what that is, is grants of up to $100,000 for AgTech projects. And we've looked at this, at this round at specific challenges. So real problems that we're facing here in South Australia uh, that we're hoping that AgTech might have a role in addressing. So to be eligible for the grants, um, it's looking at three specific industry challenges. The first is improving drought resilience and climate adaptation for primary producers. Uh, the second is improving carbon management, sustainability and natural capital on farm. And that's to, for example, to measure and monitor performance both for consumers but also for the supply chain. And also improving market access and maximising value for primary producers through traceability and credentialing. Now we know that all of these are incredibly important to both maintain and also to grow our markets as well as ensuring that we're able to meet our climate targets. Yeah and some of those uh, as you started mentioning there are kind of interconnected even market access in some cases now with a trade deal being negotiated by your um, federal colleague Don Farrell the trade minister. Um, Europeans are very interested in how we're looking after the environment. That's right. I think um, you know it, it, people talk about the provenance of particular products, or even simply wanting to know uh, you know how sustainable they are. And that's a consumer-driven uh, impact, uh, which is you know really being felt both domestically and internationally. So it's incredibly important that we are ahead of the game. We've got some great. Um, I guess, first mover advantages that we've had in a number of things to do with climate adaptation. We want to make sure that we're given the opportunity to uh, be able to help primary producers to fast track the commercialisation of ag tech solutions uh, and that will help even more primary producers around the state and around the country. Now you mentioned just there about carbon management. Uh, There's some projects that uh, have received some funding I believe in relation to how we manage I guess carbon and the different ways it comes across in the agricultural sector. That's right. So um, we've also got the carbon farming grants and they were opened um, a little while ago. They've now been announced. And that's uh, an outfit between 43000 and $100,000 in funding. Uh, and the projects that have been successful, they span across quite a range. They include horticulture, livestock, cropping and dairy. Uh, and include things like soil, soil carbon sequestration and revegetation, uh, to animal effluent management project activities um, and a number of others. So uh, yeah, quite a good range there. Uh, and I think you noticed in the list, Mali Sustainable Farming almost got $100,000. What are they going to be up to? That's right. So uh, they're going to be looking at the development and assessment of large-scale cropping systems based soil carbon sequestration through soil amelioration practices in the in the Murray Mallee. So it's a bit of a mouthful, but really looking at um, you know how they can uh, better sequester carbon through soil amelioration, uh, and that's a really you know very important part as well. So good to see that one of the uh, businesses in the Murray Mallee was successful in that grant round. And it goes to show these things aren't suddenly things farmers need to do that they weren't going to do before. They run sort of hand in hand with good soil management, among other things? Well, a lot of farmers, of course, have been you know, very advanced in a lot of these areas for some time. Uh, and we know that it's in their interests as well as in the interests of the environment to be able to uh, demonstrate sustainability and demonstrate and make sure people know about good practices. So there's a, you know, a whole, I guess, uh, you know, piece that all kind of melds in together, which is really, really positive for South Australia. And we've also kept a close eye through our agricultural departments in South Australia on public health when it comes to our fisheries. Uh, The Pippi fishery was closed for some time, but I understand uh, the season's been extended after you've got an all clear on the Pippies. That's right. So um, your listeners might be aware that there was uh, an E. coli issue uh, in regards to uh, Gulba Pippies uh, and therefore uh, that needed to be closed for recreational fishing. Uh, but that, that has now been open again because the, the levels are of a suitable, uh, you know, suitably low. Uh, and Rec Fisher Day was actually very active in this space. They were saying, look, this is a really important recreational activity for Rec Fishers. Is it possible to be able to extend the season uh, to make up for the time that it's closed. So I was able to get advice from ASADI, from the South Australian Research and Development Institute, and they were able to confirm that that is possible. Uh, and so that's what I've been able to do, which is, is really good, so that um, you know, there is that opportunity to, for people to get out who uh, you know, are interested in pippy fishing, uh, and they will be able to fish for uh, a period roughly equivalent to what it would have been if we hadn't needed to have the closure. Good news for those leading into the April holiday season. Claire Scriven is the Primary Industries Minister. Thanks for joining us again on Flow FM. 
Uh, thank you so much, and hopefully people will get out and about over Easter.